yeah. it's, uh, it's only going to go away. And as, as I said before, I don't think the championship will be professional in a couple of years' time. I feel like the RFU has a similar approach, which is like, if you grew up, born and bred northeastern um kid and you really want to play rugby they're just gonna be like just you have to go south in order I to make it do you feel like it's like that or yeah, like an entitlement I and arrogance no, I, don't think it's, I, did, I think it's like i know falcons do a fantastic job leeds with their academy leeds did for years had a fantastic academy i mean okay the amount of players who played in england rugby coming from yorkshire is fantastic but i think the rfu have given up on the championship for sure because yeah they don't from a pure business sense, if, if if you're not seeing money being returned back into the system, a financial gain for your investment, why would you invest in it? However, it's the unseen thing. It's the amount, it's the 18 out of 23 of an England squad who've played in the championship at some stage. It's the 30 or 40% of homegrown players in the premiership have played in the championship at some stage. It's it's where the premiership clubs send their players on loan, where their young lads get an opportunity to play. Because without that, that wouldn't happen. They wouldn't, Progress. There's, there's some lads, there's Manu Tulangis as well, who at 16 was ready to play Premiership rugby and no one doubted it. But there's all the rest of the boys who are sort of a slow builder and need that experience, need that exposure, especially the guys who maybe physically weren't capable at 18, who develop, learn their, learn their craft and their skill whilst developing physically. And then at 21, 22, they're ready to play. Um, but because the RFU don't see any financial gain, I understand it's not an endless pot of money. Um, I fully understand that. but why, why would they invest in, in the championship when they can invest in concerts at Twickenham and make them money? Then they can invest in sponsorship deals and make them money. Yeah. Do you, no think, yeah. do you think then, like talking about, like it's almost like, oh, if you need to take responsibility and kind of up their game, do you think then um, the premiership clubs and the consortium that runs the premiership, is it CVC or something like that, something like that, do you think they need to take a bit of responsibility and to help like kind of the, the lower leagues? Because I know in football, obviously it's, it's not really there essentially, but like you see a lot of premier league clubs, the, the money trickles down while it's supposed mm -hmm. to trickle down. Uh, it's probably a better way to put it. Do you think yeah. there's an element there that needs to happen or? I think realistically it, it, it can never happen because uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I could be completely wrong here, but I believe last year, what well, before the year before COVID only one premiership club made profit that year most premiership clubs lose money. So if they're losing money financially right. and, and they're having to rely on wealthy investors to make up that difference, then the money's never going to trickle down. However, yeah. if, if premiership rugby want to be their own entity and want to be self-sufficient and sort their own TV deals, financial deals, then that's, I'd say that's a fantastic idea if you let them be a self-sufficient business. But from that, the additional money that the RFU pays the premiership clubs needs to be taken back down the ladder and, and that, that's not a championship that's from the lowest level 15 juniors vets everything and mm. they all have to feel the benefit of that which i question whether if that were to happen whether they would trickle that money back down or would it disappear yes yeah, fair enough no definitely and Fair play to you for speaking on because the reason we got you on is when i was searching up kind of championship players oh. i'd seen you on a couple of articles saying about the kind of funding and stuff. Could you kind of give us an example of, I've, I've heard a lot of stories about players like paying for their own surgeries and different things like that. I, I do experience any of that. And I think, was it, is it a, like a 12 week injury contracts where if you're injured for more than 12 weeks, they, they can just basically cut you out of the squad? Yeah, it's, it's an interesting one. Um, I mean, the most prevalent one was the, the Leeds boys who were served bills for their own medical care. And thankfully, they all got sorted due to a few courageous boys speaking out about it. But um, typically, a lot of championship clubs, boys have to pay their own medical insurance, um, which the older you get, the more injuries you have, the more expensive it gets, which is obviously difficult. Uh, some clubs will contribute a fee uh, towards that and split split sort of a halfway uh, point. A couple of clubs are still very good and still pay their boys medical fees, which, are, which is fantastic. They should do that. I think if you ask any any player to step onto a pitch for you and and dedicate their lives to the sport and and the, the club they're playing for representing that club then you, the least you can do is honor their contracts and, and look after them which unfortunately doesn't happen i i, I'm, I fell far myself i i um, had a pcl injury second last game of not last season season before um, was out the whole summer but plays first game of the season so it's kind of 
perfect situation if you're going to get injured. You want to be injured when there's no games so you can play then. Um, and then got through the season or to the midway point of the season. And in January, um, snapped my ankle and uh, fractured my ankle and um, tore a couple of ligaments. Um, got back from surgery and then um, came in on the Monday and just to get my dressings changed and got given my notice. Um, the, the championship contracts, which are ridiculous, um, allow any um, any player to be terminated from their contracts um, within 12 weeks uh, of injury. So if you're injured for more than 12 weeks of a season, which isn't um, isn't uh, in a collective, it could be aggregate, so you could have four weeks here, three weeks there, two weeks there, then it's up to the championship club whether they want to retain your contract. And obviously, currently, when money's tight, um, some clubs don't honour that. Uh, some clubs definitely do. I'm just going to put that out there. Some clubs absolutely look after their boys and look after their boys really well. Um, some clubs have the six-month injury clause, which is in the Premiership, which is fantastic. Um, but there are there are certain clubs who, who don't honour that and um, ask a lot from their players and um, don't look after them in return. Crazy. Yeah, it's amazing. That. Yeah, it's an interesting one. It's inter- if you're in any other job. Yeah, any other job, there's, yeah. there's cover for that. There's, uh, yeah, yeah, that's surely because you because obviously you know like we at the end of the day you're 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 working for a for a company you're an employee yeah fair enough you're doing something very different to an office job but you're an employee do you not think is there no government protection or anything i know you mentioned that in france there is so there's no, so there's nothing 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 at all boys oh. if i mean the worst you get would be statutory sick pay i guess which is i don't know Pittance compared to your contract, yeah. I imagine. Um, no, there's absolutely nothing, um, and there's no standardised contracts like the Premiership, where you get a six-month clause, which everyone has to agree to. The Championship, um, they'll never agree to that because obviously, for some shareholders and some owners of clubs, they don't want to have to honour contracts financially. And I understand a lot of Championship clubs are uh, hard up for money. I fully get that, but I think if, um, if you're going to ask someone to go to battle for you, then the least you can do is is on a, on a contract that you've, you've signed and agreed. The amount of players that must just get injured and simply can't afford to be, like, they would love to just continue playing rugby, the sport they love, and they'd love to try and make it professional, but they simply just can't. And they probably go off and get a nine-to-five office job in the championship when the sad thing is England have the resources you'd like to think to have two pro leagues where you could have them as professionals it is really sad and I don't know uh, is that common have you seen a lot of players like li- literally walking away from rugby at say 24 25 yeah I think this year this year in the championship you'll see a whole host of players who will walk away from championship rugby because I don't well from what I understand I could be wrong here again from what I understand I don't believe the budgets have been announced for championship rugby um, um. that gets given to the RFU the, the finances um, <laughs> and then usually when there's a late announcement it's not because it's a good bit of news that actually we've doubled it it's, yeah. uh, it's only going to go away and as, as I said before I don't think the championship will be professional in a couple of years time bar if Ealing don't get promoted and the one club that comes down I don't think there'll be a professional league I think it'll be a semi-professional part-time because realistically the amount of boys who, I, or who I've played with and experienced with a championship who've been paid 10 grand contracts 15 grand contracts there's, I mean, there's even a, a bloke, an ex championship player, posted on Twitter last week that there's boys been asked to play professional rugby in the championship without either, even a retainer, just just match fees, which that's that, I mean, that's what you get in level eight, level nine, the whole way down the system. Boys get a bit of money on the side on a Saturday and play. To ask boys to be committed at that level and and the risk, as you said before, as we were discussing before, the risk of injury, the risk of serious injury at that level for those types of figures or that type of offer is just it's ridiculous. Don't I? I don't know anyone in their right mind who'd sign who'd sign that. That's just like it's it's crazy. Like just for me, it's a breach of like surely as as a rugby governing body, you protect players' well being. Like it's just it just seems like it's just it's, forget like you know you're not able to play the sport you love. It's just people's well beings are at risk. Mm-hmm. You you know like. Like just for me, just the thought of what some people might do in order to, you know, not just play, like you said, just play getting match fees. Like, 
people would be willing to do that because of the of the sport they love. It just it's 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 almost embarrassing. Yeah, it's it's crazy. And the, you know? the boys who I just, young lads who I played with who've come to clubs and essentially getting paid minimum wage, maybe less than minimum wage in some cases. And they say, well, there's the opportunity. There's there's the dream. And for for a lot of you, I, I guess when you're younger, there's not the there's not the yeah, of course need financially. There's no you haven't got a wife, you haven't got kids. There's not responsibility, and you can chase your dreams, which I'd always encourage everyone to do. But I, I always think an honest day's work kind of for an honest day's pay. And yes. In the championship, a lot of a lot of the days pays for a lot of boys aren't, aren't the most honest things. There's, there's some boys who've been very fortunate. I've, I've been very fortunate. I've always been paid, paid reasonably well, but there's a lot of boys who haven't done and haven't had their, their fair share out of the championship clubs. And I guess if you sign the contract, you know what you're going, you know what you're going to do and you know the deal. But I don't think it should be allowed um, personally at that level. But obviously, as, as discussed, if the Olympic situations were solved, then maybe it'd be slightly different. But I don't see a, a picture where they ever are. Yeah, yeah. I know... It is really sad. I feel kind of having these honest chats is, although they can be quite depressing at times, um, I feel on the whole like they need to happen. Like...